Hi, my name is Patrick Van Treese, and I'm the Education Sales Manager for North America here at PPDS, that's Philips Professional Displays, and I'm here to give you an overview of your new Philips Interactive Flat Panel. So once you turn on your Philips Interactive Flat Panel, this is gonna be the screen that you first see. The background image is fully customizable, as well as you're able to load up to eight different icons on the dashboard screen. To change the background, you would simply grab either a USB drive or should a file already be locally stored on the interactive flat panel. When you plug in the USB drive, you would access the file explorer menu via the apps icon. File manager. And now, once you see the USB drive icon pop up under where it says local, that means that the interactive flat panel has detected your USB drive. Now, in order for the interactive flat panel to read that image, it has to be in a specific folder locally on the panel's hard drive. So you would simply, from your USB, find the image you'd want to set as the background, and you would copy it. Then I would select the local drive, Phillips folder, and then wallpaper. And then I would paste that image right into the interactive flat panel's hard drive. Now to set it, you would simply access the settings menu from the navigation menu on the side, select Android settings, signage display, and then miscellaneous. From here, you will see the change wallpaper option, and it automatically reads all image files that's inside that specific folder. So you can see the education wallpaper we have here. I would hit save, and now when you go back to the home screen through the navigation menu, you can see that the wallpaper has been changed to the file type of your choice. So if you'd like to add an additional icon to the home dashboard, let me show you how to do so. You wanna access the side navigation menu and access settings. You then wanna click Android settings and then signage display. Once here, you select general settings and then home shortcut. This will give you a list of all eight slots that are available on the home dashboard screen. I select shortcut one. It's going to be an application. And here the list of loaded applications will pop up for your choosing. I wanna select Chromium, our internal web browser. I wanna hit okay, and then hit save here on the bottom right. And now when you access the home screen from the side menu, you can now see that Chromium is added and filled up one more slot out of the eight that are available. So on the interactive flat panel screen, at all times, you're gonna notice on either side of the panel, two little grayed out carrots, which allows you to access the navigation menu when clicked. Here in the menu, you have a back icon that will clear out the navigation menu from your screen. You have a home icon that will take you back to the home dashboard screen. You have a display icon with an arrow that will show you all the different inputs that are currently available on your Philips Interactive Flat Panel. The pen icon will allow you to enter annotation mode, which allows you to annotate and draw over any image that is currently on your Interactive Flat Panel. The gear icon will allow you to access the Android settings and internal settings of the Flat Panel itself. The star icon allows you to access your favorite applications for quick and easy access. The hammer and wrench icon is to disable the touch functionality so when locked, nobody can navigate or draw or do anything on the panel itself. The bubble icon with the letter I shows you all the information about your in interactive flat panel. You'll see an Android character here at the bottom and that allows you to see all open applications and just like your smartphone, gives you the ability to close out any applications that you're currently not using. On the very bottom of the navigation menu, you'll find a back arrow that allows you to go to a previous screen in any application or menu setting that you're currently in. So built into your Philips Interactive Flat Panel, we have annotation mode. Annotation mode can be accessed by the side navigation menu. Click on the side caret. You'll see a pen icon here listed with all the other icons. Once selected, that will take a screenshot of exactly what is on the panel. 
And this allows you to, at the bottom, select your pen and your color and annotate over whatever is on the screen. Should I want to circle a word, star an image, whatever it may be, it allows you to annotate over this image and you can either continue your work by pressing this icon, which will allow you to continue, or when you enter annotation mode and you want something and you wanna save what your work is, you can also hit that floppy disk and you'll go through the same save features that we reviewed earlier in this presentation. On the dashboard of your Philips Interactive Flat Panel, you will find the whiteboard icon. So once you press that, it's gonna open up the whiteboard mode that's built into the panel. From here, you can see all the different tools that are available for you at the bottom of the screen. Each interactive flat panel will come with a dual tip stylus. You have a skinny end and you have a large end for annotation. You select the pen icon, you can see two different pen sizes, skinny end and the large end, and you can choose different thicknesses and different colors for each tip. So I choose white, for the skinny tip, I can go back and choose red for the large tip. Now again, here you have colors that, that are immediate options and you also have a full color spectrum for you to choose and make your own color. So next to the pen icon, you'll find an icon with the square, circle, and triangle that accesses different shapes, templates, and charts. So you click that icon, you have a lot of different shapes at your disposal. You can choose to draw circles, or you can choose to draw arrows. You can choose different charts if you're choosing. You can do something like a fishbone chart, or you can choose a chart with five different options. And then last, you have different templates. You can have different textured backgrounds. You have different sport courts or fields. You have music notes and things that even resemble notebook paper. So since I'm a basketball guy, I will choose the basketball icon or template and draw it out. Now from here, you can go back and select that pen icon. So if I'm a basketball coach, I can sit here and I can draw up plays. I can do my X's and O's or whatever I need to do as needed. So next to the shapes and templates icon, you'll find the eraser. Several different ways of erasing the annotation or drawing that you do on the board. So I can draw something like this. I have the ability to erase it with my palm. So there's palm recognition for me to erase. I have the ability of selecting the eraser and select it just like I would draw. I also have the ability of circling whatever I want to erase. And last but not least, if I draw and I want to erase everything that's on the screen, I simply drag this and I slide it over and it will clear the entire screen. So next to the eraser icon, you'll find the undo and redo icons. The undo icon allows you to go back and change something that you previously did. And the redo icon allows you to kind of move forward and reapply what you initially erased or what you initially annotated. In the very center of the toolbar, you'll find a square. And what this does, it allows you to hide this menu so you need the entire full screen to show what you're annotating or what you're drawing. And then you simply touch that square again to show and display all the tools that are available in our whiteboard application. So you'll see a palette icon here at the bottom. The palette allows you to customize the color of the background itself. We have nine different colors, all of the matte texture, so it's easier on the eyes for you to choose from, whether it's blue, gray, green, and any color here provides very high contrast of any color that you choose to draw over. You also have the ability of changing the different textures of the background. Whether you want no squares, you want a smaller grid, a little bit of larger grid, or even lines like you have in typical notebook paper. Should you want a, a custom background or a custom color image for you to annotate over, you simply select customize. Then as long as you have that file loaded on a panel or a hard drive, you simply hit the plus icon. I can hit local and I have a white background that is saved. And now you have your own custom white background. Next, you'll find the freeform selection icon. So if I wanna draw something on the board, I have several options of what I can use this for. 
I can circle it and I can rotate it. I can make it larger or smaller. I can copy it. I can delete it. Then I also have the ability of taking it, putting it over another image, using this as the layer function. So if you want something to be on top or beneath, you just pick and choose depending on what your preference is. So next to the freeform selection icon, you'll find a hand icon. And this activates the multi points of touch. So when you draw, one finger will draw, two fingers will move it as an infinite canvas. You also have the ability of shrinking or making whatever you have larger. And then when you hit this hand icon, this allows for multiple people to draw at the same time. So you can see I have 10 points of touch happening right now, but the panel can handle up to 20 at one time. So next to the hand icon, you'll find the floppy disk, which is how you save whatever you have drawn on your interactive whiteboard. If I want to draw smiley face, and I want to save it, you'll see several options pop up on the screen. You can save it locally to the panel itself for quick and easy access. You can send by email. You can print to a wireless printer. When you have a USB drive plugged into the panel, you'll see the USB icon available. And the favorite saving method across all school districts is being able to scan that QR code. All you need is your smart device and your camera app, such as an iPhone. I open up the camera. I can scan that QR code. And now all pages of what I was annotating on the whiteboard are available right on your smart device. So in the whiteboard mode, on the very bottom right-hand corner, you'll see a plus sign. And what this does is if you have something long or something that you want to break up, break up, you can hit the plus sign and add multiple pages. So if I want to draw something like this, whatever it may be, you can go back to each page and see exactly what you drew. And then next, when you see all the pages sitting there, you'll notice a trash can icon. Whatever page that you're currently on, you hit that trash can and it will delete that page and automatically go to the one that was right before it. Then on the far right, you'll notice the last icon, which is a folder. The folder allows you to access any images that you want that's on the panel to annotate over in the whiteboard mode. So I select the folder. I can select image since I have it locally stored and I want to select this picture and have the ability to make it smaller. And again, I can annotate it and do anything I need with it right here on the Whiteboard app. In today's meeting and classroom environments, users are looking for better ways to collaborate and share information. With our Interact application, you can do just that. You can cast from a device to the panel and control that device from the panel itself. You can mirror what's on the panel to a device and also chain several displays together. Let me show you how to do that. So in order to download our Interact application to a Windows device, you must first go to ppds.com and in the search bar, type in Interact Screen Sharing. Options will come from the drop-down menu and you wanna click Interact Wireless Screen Sharing. Once you're on the screen, you want to scroll down until you see the Download the Interact app. Once you click on that, it takes you to our Download Center where you will then go to Software. Now under the Interact app software, you will find it where you can download it for Windows, Mac, and other operating systems. We are currently working with Microsoft and getting the Interact application loaded into the Microsoft Store. For now, any Windows devices, you can download the app right here from our website. For Mac OS and iOS, it is available in the Apple Store. And for any Android or Chrome device, you can download it from the Google Play Store by searching for Interact Screen Sharing. Once you click on the Windows Interact application, it will be downloading the file down here in the lower corner of your browser. Once downloaded, the Interact application will look just like this on your home screen. Once you open it up, you want to ensure that both your device that you want to cast and the panel are on the same network. So when connected to the same network, your device will automatically read the Interact that is on the panel. In this case, on the panel, it says Interact-1311, 
And as you can see on my laptop, it matches that so you can click connect. Once you connect, you have the choice of sharing your screen, which is casting from your device to the panel. Then you have the ability of TV mirroring, which is casting from the panel to your device. So once connected on the same network and you're connected to the panel to cast your laptop or your device to the panel, you select share screen. And now in real time, you can see that your laptop's dashboard, home screen, or any document that you have up is on the panel. You have the ability of opening up your email. You can open up the calculator, open up an Excel spreadsheet, and even different documents and worksheets that educators would use, such as this being a word search. So any program, application, document, worksheet, or bookmark that you have available on your laptop can be controlled and used right here on the panel directly. Just like you have the ability of casting from your device to the panel with the share screen option, now on the TV mirror option, this allows you to cast from the panel to your device. This is great because it allows for any individuals who may not be able to see the panel or be too far away, be able to mirror what's on the panel to their device so they can see it clearly in real time. You also have the ability to control the panel from the device that you have, whether you wanna access the menu, access settings, or anything that you need to control, you will be able to do so. So on the bottom right-hand screen, you'll also find our webcast feature that Interact provides. You could disable webcast or enable it right here from this menu. Webcast allows the user to be able to cast to the panel without having to be on the same network. You would simply go to the cast.app website. Once on that website, it will ask you for this ID that's on the panel. Then you will see a four digit code pop up here on the bottom right hand corner, which will allow the leader of the conference or the teacher inside the class to allow or deny access for that device to cast to the panel. Again, this is a great solution for visitors or students that might not be on the same network as the panel itself to allow them to cast from their device and show their work or show an image from their device to the panel, again, without having to be on the same network. To use a webcast, you simply go to the website on the screen, which is cast.app. You type in the ID, which in this case is 044271. You will then see a passcode pop up on the screen that the user will have to enter. In this case, it is 2313. And then on the screen, it will ask for someone to deny or allow connection. So I would hit allow. And now on the browser, the user will have the choice of sharing this Chrome tab, their full window or their entire screen. So another great tool on our Interact application is the ability to chain multiple displays together. Down here on the bottom right, you'll notice an icon with a large display with three smaller displays underneath it. Once you touch that, here you'll see a device list. When you have other displays that are on the same network as this display, you'll see all those display names come up underneath the device list. Their names could be anywhere from Interact-1311 like this one is, or any name that you, that you changed on any of the other displays. The wall be here so you can uniquely identify which ones you want to create a clone. So essentially with the display chaining, this home panel, exactly what is on this display will be cloned to any other display, either one or several on the same network. This is a great case for when you have parent teacher conference or you have a large event, you want to have some sort of greeting or image or message available. You can put displays like this in front of those entrances. So when people come in, you can have that same message and image greeting everybody as they come on site. So on the Interact screen in the bottom right, you'll find a gear icon that allows you to access the Interact settings. When you press that gear, a lot of things come up that allows you to customize your experience with the Interact application. Under device name, as you can see, the Interact name for the panel is Interact-1311. You can touch this pen icon and really change it to anything you would want. I'm gonna change this one to let's just say Philips. So now, when you clear out of it, you want to uniquely identify this display 
You can because you change it to Philips and now you can identify that should you want to cast or clone or mirror from this display, you know which display you're going to be using. You have different options when it comes to connecting to the panel. You can connect to it by the display name by identifying Philips. You can choose a six digit pin code that pops up here that you can manually refresh to have something different. And you can also set it so that pin code will automatically refresh. You can disable it in its entirety, or you can have it automatically refresh every 10 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour, or every day. You can pick a six digit code or a eight digit code with the same pin code refreshing interval limits that I, I just showed. You can cast anywhere from one device all the way up to nine simultaneously on the panel. Essentially, with nine screens, that would create a three by three grid that you'll still have the ability to control each device, whether Windows or Mac, from the device, from the panel itself. You also have the ability to show the device name on the screen. You can auto full screen. You can do it so AirPlay devices are visible and can connect. Same with browsers or devices with Chromecast built in. And the hyperlink down here allows you to click on that to check if the Interact application has any recent updates to its firmware. Then you have the two options here at the bottom, AirPlay and Chromecast, that you can enable or disable it for connecting from those devices. So on the panel, you'll notice we have an icon up here on the right-hand side that has the same icon as a person as the one below. This shows that there is a device currently connected to the panel for quick access, or you can come to the Interact application screen and click on the icon at the bottom. So this is gonna be your moderator control center. This allows you to really dig down into the specs and customize the connectivity options that you wanna set forth for your conference room or in your classroom environment. This first dropdown will, for the sharing your screen or sharing a file to the panel, you can either allow every device to automatically be able to cast, you can require it to need authorization in order for it to cast, or you can disable it altogether. For the view control and wireless annotation that you would do in screen mirroring mode, same options, you can allow everyone, you can allow them to only view what is on the screen, you can require that authorization, or again, you can disable it altogether. And then floating moderator button, which is that icon I have here on the right-hand side of the screen, you can make that automatically show up, always display, only on the home screen, or again, you can disable it altogether. And underneath that, it will show you a number of current connected devices to the panel. For example, I have my Philips PC currently connected, and the three icons over here allow me to, the chain link is to disconnect that device from the panel. The display icon allows me to either cast automatically what's on my laptop screen to the panel without having to go back to the laptop or end the casting session from that device. And then the hand icon allows me to control whether that person can annotate or take control of the panel remotely. So although we have wireless connectivity options built into the panel, Hardwiring is also available. Let me show you how to do that. Depending on your device, you might have to use a dongle for other connectivity ports. You will need an HDMI cable that comes with the panel that will broadcast the image from your laptop to the panel, and then also use the included USB type B cable that will allow the touch functionality. Once the HDMI and the USB cable is plugged into the side of the display, you would access that HDMI port, which in this case is HDMI 3. And when it switches over, you will have your laptop screen available on the panel. Whether I want to open up calculator, I want to access an Excel spreadsheet, or even open up a page on my browser, you can control your whole laptop from the panel itself. During the last five minutes of class, teachers like to have a bell assignment. They want the kids to be able to look at a still image on the panel while the teacher still has the ability of working from their laptop while their laptop is connected to the panel. What we can do here is a teacher can put up a document, a word search for example, enter annotation mode through the navigation menu, and now that's gonna keep that screenshot on the screen so the kids can continue their work. Meanwhile, the teacher will have the option of coming back to her laptop and working on emails or something else that she has to do or he has to do without being on the screen.
So the apps icon on the home dashboard is where you can locate all the applications that are loaded on your interactive flat panel. Simply access the apps icon by touching it. And here it will show all the different icons that are currently loaded on there. So if you have the need to load any Android application onto your interactive flat panel, let me show you how to do that. You have to access the Android settings by hitting the gear icon in the navigation menu, Android settings. Then you wanna to go to security and right here where it says unknown sources, the panel is gonna think that it's an unknown source when you plug in a flash drive to install your Android application. So you have to make sure that this feature is turned on. Turn on by selecting that. You wanna navigate back home where you have access to the icons. Now you would hit the apps icon, you would open up the file manager. You could also open up the file manager if you have it selected as a favorite here on this navigation menu. From here, since I am accessing my flash drive, you can see that being highlighted here, I'm gonna access our WAVE APK. WAVE is our cloud-based management tool that allows you to manage and customize your fleet of Philips displays from anywhere in the world. So I want to install that, double click it. You'll see this coming up. Do you want to install this application? You would say install. Once the Android application is done installing, you can hit done navigate home from the menu. Now when you hit the apps tool, here you can see our WAVE application loaded onto the panel. So your Philips Interactive Flat Panel does come with a built-in web browser. It's Chromium. And you can find Chromium in a previous segment. I added Chromium to the dashboard. You can also find it if you go through the apps icon and the Chromium app will be listed right there for your convenience. So with Chromium being the built-in web browser on your Philips interactive display, you can open it up. You can go to any website that you would like. You open up the Chrome browser. You would touch up here at any web address or the URL. And down here, you'll see the keyboard pop up. The keyboard is gonna start off in this wide angle, but down here in the bottom right, you have the ability of selecting it so it's compact and easier to type on. So if I wanna to go to the Philips Professional Displays website. I can type that in here, hit enter, and the Philips website will pop up. So the file manager tool is gonna to be your tool to access all the files that are either on a flash drive or on your Philips interactive display. You can access the file manager tool by either clicking on the apps icon in the dashboard where you can see it here, or like I showed you previously, if you wanted to access it from your favorites menu right here. When you have your flash drive plugged into the panel, you can see obviously it says the local drive, and then it's gonna have the name of your flash drive where you can go in between and access the different files from the different folders that you have loaded onto that drive. So if you want anything local, you can go through the downloaded folders, notifications, the whiteboard, any folder that you have to really access and bring that document to life. So on either of the drives, whether a flash drive or the local drive loaded onto the panel, you can filter by what files you wanna view by looking at the top. You can select all files, files of different file type, images, or any media that you have loaded. The gear icon on the side navigation menu is where you're gonna find all the general settings that are rooted to the panel itself. You'll find picture, audio, configuration, and advanced options. Each of these allow you to customize different features and specifications of the panel, whether you want to adjust the time and date, whether you want to adjust the language, picture characteristics, audio settings, boot up and power options, and more. They're all here for your convenience. However, I highly recommend you contact your technology department before you alter any of the pre-selected settings. If you want to access the Android settings on your interactive panel, you would still click on that same gear that's in that side navigation menu. Hit the gear and here you'll see Android settings. Here you'll find a lot of different things that you can alter and change on the panel itself. For example, you have network and internet that will go through whether your, your Wi-Fi settings or your hardwired ethernet connectivity. You have different signage display applications where you can change general settings, reset passwords, set your wallpaper and things of that nature. You have apps and notifications where you can really customize the applications, uninstall them, 
do a four stop and things like that. On display, you can change the font size of the screen and make either larger or smaller to whatever fits you and your classroom's needs. You also have security that's gonna really go, go through the unknown sources which you need to have on to access any of the Android applications to load them. But then towards the bottom, you can access the different security and system settings and also get information about your interactive flat panel. At Philips, education is its own silo within our support system. All of our reps are based out of Atlanta, Georgia, and are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Should you have any issues with your interactive flat panel or any digital signage or video wall display, you can contact the dedicated education hotline and their dedicated email support line as well. So all the Philips digital signage and video wall displays come with a standard three-year advanced exchange warranty. All interactive flat panels come with a five-year advanced exchange warranty. Should any of your displays have any damage or manufacturer defects and are covered under our warranty, you can call the hotline or the email alias and we can troubleshoot the damage or the malfunctions over the phone. If that doesn't work, you would simply ship us the broken unit and we ship you a brand new unit and we cover shipping both ways. For more information, please go to our company website at ppds.com where you can learn more about our company, read about our different solutions to different markets and how we can bring your digital vision to life. Thank you.